Hey y'all, Woodturners, welcome back to my shop. Today I want to show you how to turn some of those nice scraps you might have, uh, cut-offs of exotic woods a little bit, so they're too good to throw away. You know, we've all got them. Uh, how to turn them into something uh, useful and, and uh, make great little gifts, and that's fan, uh, fan pulls or light pulls. Uh, you know, replacing the ones that come from a light, it doesn't take a whole lot to, to improve. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to continue. Well, let me, let me give you a close up, if I, if I can see this. Of, you can turn these any kind of variety of ways, and I've got a picture I'm going to going to show you here. Uh, but you know, they're just they're just fun little projects, and, and I can't emphasize enough how important it is for a, a novice turner to turn the same thing multiple times in order to improve your tool skill, your technique, and as well as your design. Uh, and, and that only comes with, with practice. Now, I've got to preface this as I usually do. This is not the only way to do it. may not be the best way to do it, but it's the way I do it. And if you got something better, a comment. I'm, uh, me as well as the, uh, my other viewers would love to have it, so uh, feel free to make a comment. We're going to start off with a scrap of wood somewhere between one and a half to three inches long and somewhere around maybe seven eighths to an inch and a half uh, in diameter. Any kind of wood will work. Heck, you can even uh, glue up or laminate it if you got little scraps. If you made uh, cutting boards or if you're a segmenter, I'm sure you probably got some little scraps that will that'll work fine. So, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to kind of mark. Actually, I'm not going to mark the center. Uh, I'm going to show you how we drill these first. And we've got several options for drilling. And I want to give you as many options as possible. Everybody's shop's not, a, not set up the same way. We all have our preference for tools. Uh, and so I've got some, some different techniques. Now, you can drill these on the, on the drill press table, as I've shown in this picture, picture here. Uh, that works just fine. If, it's an, it's an alternative if you have a drill press and you don't have a Jacob's chuck to drill them on on the lathe. But actually, I prefer to, to do them on the lathe. I think they're, it's faster and, and actually easier. Now, one thing that I've got that makes it a little easier for me is I've got some pen jaws. These are Nova uh, jaws. They come in pairs. And they're for drilling out pen blanks, but they'll hold out any type of uh, square square stock. So let me show you how that works. So we're going to take this this uh, blank, and it's just going to catch the corners. So it doesn't have to be perfectly square. Doesn't have to be milled lumber. This is a couple of scraps of sycamore that been drying for a year or so. And the traditional way that we we drill. Excuse me while I'm talking my back, uh, is with the Jacobs chuck uh, on the on the lathe. Uh, and one little technique I want to mention now. I find it safer when, when you're using a Jacobs chuck to go ahead and put the drill in off the lathe. That way you can make sure it's centered because the one way you can really mess up drilling this hole is you can. Uh, hold one of these small drill bits fairly easily uh, and not get it centered. But when you look at it, you can tell. So this is a traditional way of doing it. And I'm going to show you a couple of faster ways. Get the banjo out of the way. Uh, before I do that, the first thing I like to do is kind of face it off a little bit because the, where we're going to drill, uh, this is going to be where you're going to be able to see it on, on either end. And it's easier to go ahead and clean it up now and not have to worry about it later. So I tend to use a skew. Most of this work I'll do with a uh, spindle roughing gouge or a spindle gouge, but a skew works real well for some tasks. And this is one of them. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and make a little starter hole. It'll make it just a little easier for the drill bit to find its way. 
Now, the drill bit I'm using, I'm drill, drilling a 9 uh, 64 hole. It's just a shade over 1 8. And the reason, actually, I'm going to drill a 9 uh, 64 on one end, and then I'm going to drill a 5 16 on the other. The hole needs to be big enough to hold this 1 inch chain, and a 1 inch, a 1 8 inch hole is just not big enough. On the back side, Show you that now. Uh, we're going to we're going to use this uh, five uh, five sixteenths hole because it needs to have a ball or something to hold the chain to keep it from pulling through, and that way it conceals it a little bit. So uh, five sixteenths is a good size. So we're going to turn this on. Good lay speed for drilling. It's about a thousand. Not critical. Kind of let it find its way. And then we clear the chips. One of the things that makes it easier to clear the chips is a, a little brass detail brush. Reverse, reverse this. Let me figure out where I put my chuck key. And I turn it exactly 180 degrees so I can keep that same. Try to keep the same orientation of the wood if it's not perfectly square. Now, I'm going to show you an alternative to, to drilling, but what we do, again, we're going to face this off. This is going to be the bottom. I'm going to chamfer it just a little bit. Chamfer that little starting, starting hole. Now, what if you're doing a bunch of these things in, in production, you're looking for ways to speed up the process. And one way to speed up the process is to use a dedicated hand drill. And these work just great. Only problem was I made these not for this process, and this is uh, only a sixteenth of an inch, and this one's a quarter of an inch, so neither one of them the right size. But let me just show you how they how it works, and it works just fine on on drilling. You're just going to freehand it, and we're going to come back with it five sixteenths. Uh, uh, but I'll show you how this works. Now I have these things scored with a with a file. So I can visually see how deep. Now we're going to drill this bottom hole, the 5 16 hole, somewhere between 3 8 and a half inch. It's not really critical. And that's how it works if you really want to speed this process up. Make you a couple of dedicated handles. If you're only going to do a few, but, but several, another alternative, if you have a spare Jacobs chuck, put one drill bit in one chuck, the other drill bit in the other chuck, and use the actual Jacobs chuck as a handle. Now I'm fortunate in that I have one that's keyed, a keyed chuck, and one that's, uh, you can hand tighten. I like the hand tighten one because I have to look for the, for the key. But this other one works well too. So we tighten that up. So this is a 5 16 I'm just going to go back in and redrill that hole. And it works. Now that we've got it drilled out, 
what we want to uh, double check and, and, and the, is make sure we've got a through hole. Now the problem with these little jobber bits is they'll only drill somewhere around uh, oh maybe two and a half inches. That is about two inches deep this distance plus the half an inch or so of the larger hole where it meets. Uh, so when you before you take it off the lathe to turn it you want to make sure you do have a through hole. Now the fastest way is to just go ahead and, and drill this from the other side. And that will guarantee a, a through hole. So now we're going to take this off. Now, in my, last, in my last video, I showed you how to make a wooden Morse taper. And that's what we're going to use for this project. I told you we were making those Morse tapers for something specific, and this is the first project we're going to use it for. So I've got one turned. Now, so what you want to do is turn this, uh, this part right here to 5 sixteenths. So it'll fit in there. Now, the, what, what I've experienced is you have a tendency to get some burning unless you make this a little bit longer. And I found instead of making it perfectly 5 sixteenths, make it a little smidge uh, wider at the bottom so it actually wedges on there and you've got a little bit of uh, room. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down a little bit and tweak it with a parting tool. back there. Now for the other end, I find a cone center works just great. Um, these are fairly inexpensive. Uh, if you got a Powermatic or Jet 1642, it, it comes with a, uh, a cone center that, that's removable. If you've got a jet mini lathe and you've got the original manufacturer live center, don't worry about it. Turn your cone center as shown in this picture. And this will work just fine because all you're going to do is just, you want a cone uh, wedging in that small hole to help keep it, keep it uh, snugged up. Get it snug, not overly tight. We're going to turn it high speed. We're not turning a bowl here. So this is a small spindle project captured between uh, centers, so it's going to be very safe. And we can crank it up, still wear eyeglasses, uh, safety glasses, or face shield, uh, your preference. So we're going to turn this thing at, at speeds of excess of 2500. Might feel uncomfortable to some of you beginners, unless you're a pin turner, you know. You're going to be comfortable with those speeds if you're turning small, if you're turning pins. So we're going to use a spindle roughing gouge. Turn this, turn this cylinder around. it spins on you a little bit, you can tighten it up, but before you get it too tight, just go a little slower. Let the wood come to the tool. Okay, 
Now we're going to refine the shape a little bit with a spindle gouge. I always start at the base. And by making that um, tenon a little bit uh, fatter at the bottom, it gives us a little more room to work around the bottom. We're going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. This is just normal spindle work. Call it good. Now I'm going to use a burn wire. I use a guitar string. You can use copper. Uh, you can use just about any type of cord. You can use picture hanging wire. Just about anything. The key thing is put handles on it. Don't wrap it around your fingers. You don't want to lose a finger. So we're going to take a skew and and just make a couple of little rings for it to glide in while we're heating it up. Actually, wouldn't even have to use burn rings. That's a nice little feature, but you can see it from a distance if they're burn rings. Get that out of the way. High speed so it builds up enough friction. Then your hand over in the back. And there we go. Now, I'm going to use this little Sorby miniature spiraling uh, tool uh, with the smallest wheel on it. And we're going to set the tool rest at center height. And we're going to turn the speed down to maybe 500 or so. Not critical. Plus or minus 100. And we're just going to ease, we're going to engage the tool, lift the handle so it starts cutting. And then gradually work back and forth a little bit. And then we've got some nice, nice little detail. And we're going to get rid of the frizzies by using this uh, coarse abrasive pad. I'll just kind of knock off the frizzies. Um, most any finish will do fine if you use uh, antique oil. That works great. For little things like this, I tend to want to use a, a friction uh, finish uh, that a pin turner might use while it's on the lathe. I don't like CA glue finishes. Uh, I don't like the smell. So we're just going to use some uh, hut. Get a little, little pad folded in half. Shake it up a little bit. Put a, a generous amount on here and just wipe it on. Get it in the crevices. The texture in you got to come across to get it in there good. And we're going to crank this thing up pretty good speed. Move it.
Okay, let's take this off the off the lathe. Now all we have to do is put a bit of chain on it. Um, you can get this chain. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a couple of close-up pictures here you can look at uh, on some of the detail, but you can get chain from your uh, local local hardware store, big box store. Um, your best bet's a hardware store because then you're able to get lots of little small uh, fittings that you can use as as stops. Um, but all you do is drop your chain in. Oops, go in from the top. And then have some type of uh, fixture. There's different types. Uh, just look at the prices at, at a well-equipped hardware store. And you can buy the chain by the, by the foot. Actually, the cheapest uh, solution, though, for buying these is buying in sets of five uh, from Craft Supply. You'll get about four, four inches of chain. You'll get this little coupler so it will uh, fasten to uh, the existing chain. And, and you can, it'll come with a ball uh, stop here that will uh, keep it uh, from slipping out. Uh, got a couple of other, I got some close up pictures of the chain. Uh, one thing I one thing I did forget to one mention. Thing I forgot to mention. I published an article in American Woodturner, and I believe this is June June of last year, 2014, on making uh, making uh, light and fan pulls. Uh, you can go to my blog. Uh, you can go to my blog. It's posted in the description to download that article if if you're interested. I hope you got something useful out of this uh, this video. Uh, if so, feel free to please subscribe and. And you'll be notified when the next video is ready. Thanks for visiting my shop.